React India. I think yes. <laughs> just... Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kirti Vanekar. I'm a senior software engineer at Recro. And uh, today I'll be talking about um, React 18 SSR changes. So React 18 introduces service changes to server side rendering uh, so that we can leverage the concurrent features that React 18 has brought for all of us. So let's begin. The key takeaways from this talk would be what are the SSR improvements in React 18 and how concurrent rendering works under the hood and how you suspense enables concurrent features for SSR. So I was actually looking for a funny opening line, but actually I found a brainy one. So why does React components start taking uh, acting classes? So it wanted to master the art of suspense, but it just kept rendering too soon. So, okay, moving on. What is server-side rendering and why is it important? So server-side rendering is one of the rendering patterns used to ship products in a more performant, SEO-conscious and user-friendly way. So how does it work? First of all, when a, a browser receives a request for a web page, it forwards the same to the server. Server then fetches the data for all your uh, components and renders the React components into a ready-to-go HTML, and then the resulting HTML is forwarded to the browser and is visible to the users while the browser downloads all the JavaScript and the page is hydrated. So because the browser uh, has a reliable internet connection and uh, possibly a more uh, processing power, it can do this pretty quickly as compared to client-side rendering. So it does all the heavy lifting of, you know, gathering data from your databases, calling APIs, and doing any personalization in terms, in case you want to render custom content. So now, in case of server-side rendering, we have to hydrate the page. So what is hydration? So you, the React team uh, defines hydration as the process of rendering your components and attaching event handlers to them. It's like, you know, your server is forwarding your dry HTML and you're pouring in the water of interactivity and event handlers, which is a really nice analogy to the name. So now, what are the advantages of server-side rendering? It has a lot of benefits and they fit into different categories depending on what use case you use server-side rendering for. But they broadly fit into these three categories. That is, it helps improve performance, search engine optimization, and user experience. So SSR is best in case you have dynamic pages to render, which requires user cookies, data that is render blocking, and sites that are content heavy. Now, what was the server-side rendering process before React 18? Whatever we discussed just now is exactly the process that was occurring before React introduced the concurrent features in 18. So you have to fetch the data for your application. That is on the server side. Your data has to be fetched for all the React components, and only then the rendering is going to start. The rendering of HTML has to happen for your entire application, and then your, uh, it is forwarded to the client. So on the client side, also the browser has to load JavaScript for your entire application. And the page has to be entri uh, entirely hydrated. Only then the users can you know, interact with the application. So the emphasis here is that all these four steps have to occur for your entire application at once. That means neither of these steps can uh, take place before the previous step has completed for the entire application. So this process works, and we have all been using it. But is it optimal? And more importantly, is it async? Which it is not. Each of these uh, steps have to happen sequentially, and they block the user while uh, you know uh, the until uh, the entire hydration process is complete. The user is blocked, and the uh, page uh, is not interactive. So your even if at all. Your, most of your application is really fast. But if at all, there are just one or two components that are really slow because they involve expensive data computation or maybe a very you know, slow API, then uh, your time to first byte and first contentful paint will be increased for the entire application. So 
now what do we understand from this is that you have to fetch everything before you can show everything you have to load everything before you can hydrate anything and you have to hydrate everything before you can interact with anything so now if we have to think about solving these problems we have to think of an approach where you can you know break your application into parts and each of these steps can happen asynchronously for those parts so it is it possible to have parts of our application served to us asynchronously and are we doing this anywhere in react so if you guys know or might be using we have something called code splitting and lazy loading with suspense so <laughs> when it was earlier introduced this code splitting and lazy loading with suspense was only supported on the client side but react has a team has leveraged this for the server as well now so suspense introduces two major features for uh, server side rendering that is streaming html on the server and selective hydration on the client so the improvements that have been introduced are that suspense and react lazy are supported on the server now so code splitting will work along with server side rendering you don't have to choose between the two of them react uses suspense boundaries to you know uh, stream html page in visual chunks and also to hydrate the html in chunks now how is this happening this is only happening because we were introduced with concurrency in react 18 and it's important to understand how concurrency works to you know understand how we can leverage these features for server side rendering now why do we really need concurrency so applications these days are you know really uh, deal with uh, complex data and perform at huge scale and also user experience and performance are of utmost importance so rendering such complex data can lead to uh, you know long task so any task that is more than 50 milliseconds is considered as a long task and it will restrict user uh, interactions so adi osmani you know points this out in his uh, cost of javascript this is a fun <laughs> doodle by rachel namos from the react team what it is explaining is how actually a visual update occurs in react so in react any visual updates happens in two phases that is first is the render phase and then the commit phase your render phase is a completely computational phase wherein your uh, react constructs a new component tree along with um, and then reconciles it with the existing dom so once this is done you are preparing for your updates then that is followed by the commit phase wherein these updates that were uh, you know uh, computed in the previous render stage are actually applied to your dom that's when your dom will finally you know mirror your new react uh, component tree so in a traditional uh, render or in an asynchronous render both of these steps were happening in one go that is sequential one after the other so that is what is called blocking render that means your rendering is a single uninterrupted uh, uninterrupted synchronous transaction and once rendering started it couldn't be interrupted so the concurrency the foundational update to react which is bringing in concurrency what does it do it actually makes your rendering phase interruptible Compu uh, commit phase cannot be interruptible because your changes have to be committed in the uh dom to the dom in one go that is the browser limitation you cannot do anything with that but you can interrupt pause resume or even abandon a render during the render phase so in the blocking render react uh, assigns the same uh, priority to all the elements and that's why when the render tree is uh, actually uh, computed and the process of rendering is going on if at all a user input occurs in between it won't be acknowledged that is unless your rendering process for the entire tree is complete you won't uh, be able to handle your user input and that's why you have this delay which is called first input delay what concurrency does is it introduces it allows you to mark an update as urgent or non urgent so your components are given priority and based on that your uh, 
so I'll, let's let's move to that but let's look at what's happening here so user inputs with concurrency user inputs or user interactions are given the highest priority and we'll get how priorities are you know computed uh, in some time but they are given the highest priority and that allows react to handle them in as soon as it occurs so with concurrency what react does is it allows you to uh, give uh, control back to the browser every 5 milliseconds let's see how that happens so how does the uh, react keep the browser interactive react use something called cooperative multitasking with time slicing model so here the rendering still happens in a single thread but the rendering process is interruptible okay so your uh, current so what happens is because you're using prioritization here high priority tasks can now interrupt low priority tasks so we need and when that happens and when high priority can interrupt it but they will be executed in a synchronous fashion but low priority task in um, you know low priority task can be interrupted so the heuristic currently is to yield execution back to the main thread every five milliseconds and this five milliseconds is actually not a uh, you know magical number it's actually a, a smaller than even one frame for a 120 fps device so we need that now that we know that this priority is going on we need a system that you know helps us do this that you know helps us prioritize tasks once an update occurs so we have this react scheduler package for that which whose primary responsibility is to schedule prioritize or defer updates now there are three levels of priority that's the scheduler priority event priority and lane priority scheduler priority is used to prioritize tasks in the scheduler so we know that react has an update queue and a task queue and event priority is to mark the priority of the user event and lane priority is something called priority for work so it's actually really complicated to understand and compact this concurrency theory in a, you know five to ten minutes explanation but uh, what i want to tell you is there are three pri levels of priority but they are not exclusive so your react scheduler will actually once an update occurs your react will evaluate the context of the update so the update can be occurring because of a transition or a state update or because your server has updated your response or maybe the parent is sending down a you know updated prop to the child so the context of it or maybe there has been a user event that is occurring so the context of it varies and that's where react calculates a so scheduler basically calculates what is the you know priority of the update next we have called render lanes render lanes are used to manage the priority of a low priority so deferral of low priority updates once your scheduler has the update uh, priorities assigned to the updates it still needs a way to you know time it when should you pick up which task and when should it begin and when should you interrupt it so that is all that's happening in the scheduler uh, I'll skim through this because <laughs> lanes is really a uh, tricky option, but just understand this is where your uh, deferral of updates take place. So you can check out the React Fiber Loop file. There are different three levels of priority. And now coming to it, at the end, all of these three levels give you the output in these five priority types which have the timeouts assigned to them which helps the scheduler understand when should it begin what task i mean when should it uh, pick up what task to render so if your task queue has a low priority task and the main thread picks it up what Re uh, concurrent react does is it will actually render it in chunks of five milliseconds so after five milliseconds the user uh, the control will go back to the browser and if at all there is a user input it can be handled almost in instantaneously and user input again as i said are considered to be a high priority task so they will be rendered synchronously and once that is done 
your low priority tasks can again be resumed and completed. So uh, hope you have at least a vague idea of how concurrency works and scheduling works in React, because that's actually going to help us understand the features for server-side rendering. So streaming HTML, earlier, what we were doing is we were generating one server file, which has the entire Mac, uh, markup for your application, and sending it from the server to the client. But now what we can do is we can break down your server uh, HTML into multiple chunks and send them towards the client as and when they are ready. So this actually helps us with, uh, you know, loading the initial state of your application earlier than what was happening with the previous uh, SSR approach. So now your uh, HTML can also be uh, visible to the user incrementally instead of one go. So for using this, um, we have to be uh, switching from render to string, which is the current server API, to render to pipeable string. Now, render to pipeable string leverages your Node.js streams, which allow you to inject you know, res uh, streams of data into your response object. And you can continuously uh, stream your data from the server to the client in one open stream. So this has all the new features that is full built-in support for SSR suspense, uh, code splitting with React Lazy, and streaming of HTML. So we can import it from React DOM server, and it returns two methods. That is the pipe method, which is used to output your HTML into a writable Node.js stream, and your abort method. And it takes your root React component along with certain uh, streaming options, which we will see later. Also, the client API for uh, your uh, you know, client side has been uh, revamped. Uh, now hydrate root supports all your concurrent features. So you can be using Hydrate Root if you want to opt into concurrent features in React. And uh, if it's not SSR, it's Create Root. So on the server side, we use the render to pipeable stream. We pass the root React component. And along with that, in the options object, we have to mention your file name, which, which actually defines your you know, root React component. And there's something called on shell ready callback. So what does this on shell call, uh, ready callback do? We are actually required to you know, call your pipe method, which opens your uh, stream uh, for streaming HTML inside the on shell ready. So what is it actually doing? Let's understand it with an example of a product page on an e-commerce site, wherein uh, you know, you have the search bar, sidebar, product, image car uh, carousal, details, reviews, etc. So let's wrap, you know, let's cons think, uh, consider that reviews is the problematic component. It's really slow to render and uh, might interrupt your uh, application uh, rendering. So that's why let's wrap uh, reviews around suspense and uh, your product also because your product is component will be dynamic depending on what product you search for. Let's wrap that as well uh, around suspense as well. And why do we actually need to wrap it around suspense? Because as we had discussed earlier, React uses suspense boundaries. So uh, to, you know, stream, uh, opt into these concurrent features. So React, your render to pipeable stream API will also re uh, actually uh, rely on these suspense boundaries to understand what fallbacks it has to pass in the initial uh, HTML block that will be streamed from the server to the client. So what is your shell, or what will be the first uh, chunk of HTML that we sent from the server to the client? Any, all, your all your React components that are outside all of the suspense boundaries will form you know, the first loading state that will be uh, sent from your application uh, from the server to the client. So this is what is called the shell. So once uh, your server has uh, incrementally uh, rendered these uh, HTML chunks, it can be passed to the client again in chunks. So this is what your user will first see, and this is what your shell will look like. So your uh, server will pass down the fallback for the suspense boundary, and 
incrementally as and when your components get ready, the data is fetched for them and it is available to be streamed down, it will be streamed by the server. So incrementally you can see your HTML loading. So even now it's not hydrated, but at least you're able to see something far early. So if you see, because we are wrapping the suspe uh, suspense around components that might involve heavy uh, data computations, your shell is considered to be something that will not require any of this or should be, you should wrap your suspense boundaries for your uh, components in such a way that your shell is, the, uh, is ready pretty quickly and that's why your time to first byte and first contentful paint will be significantly reduced. And because it is an open stream, as soon as your product or your review section is ready, it will be streamed in the same stream along with uh, an inline script tag. So uh, you, now that you have, a, it, the HTML is still single, but because you have blocks of them continuously sent from the server to the client, you need to pass uh, you know, a script tag to understand uh, where this new block of HTML should be injected. And that is done under the hood by React, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, so what does this help with? As we have seen, it helps us significantly, you know, reduce uh, the time to first byte and first contentful paint by breaking the synchronous nature of the first two steps of server-side rendering that we had discussed earlier. So moving on to the client-side part, which is selective hydration. Now, um, select, uh, your earlier SSR process might reduce the first time, uh, first contentful paint time, but it does interact, uh, increase your time to interactive because you know you still have to download all the JavaScript for your entire application. Now, this can lead uh, leave users in an uncanny valley wherein the page uh, seems to be ready, but interactivity feels absent. So hydration is really expensive. Why? Because we have earlier discussed that about the render and the commit phase. So what happens in hydration is the rendering is still happening for your entire React tree. So your uh, uh, React component tree for your application is still rendered during uh, hydration. Only thing is that it skips the commit phase because we already have the DOM nodes created from the HTML, pre-rendered HTML from the server. And that's why hydration is expensive because you have to render everything and the main thread will be blocked. So the goal of selective hydration here is to prioritize the order of you know, hydration that is attaching event uh, handlers and initializing component data based of what users interact with. So how does selective hydration work? Uh, initially, when the first HTML uh, chunk is sent from the server to the client, it is not hydrated because it just has your fallback uh, suspense boundaries. Then when a user interaction occurs, that is called uh, click or key press are considered discrete events uh, in React and that triggers a synchronous uh, selective hydration. So in the, uh, within the encapsulating suspense boundary, hovered and focused uh, suspense boundaries get increased hydration priority. If at all the HTML cannot be hydrated, then we call the stop propagation event to stop it from bubbling up. And in idle cycles, your, any of the remaining suspense boundaries are hydrated asynchronously. So I don't think you might have understood any of this, so let's look them uh, with an example. So let's again go back to the same example that we considered earlier. And we are wrapping uh, the reviews component with suspense and also the product component with suspense. So now let's try to understand hydration in three scenarios. First scenario is, you know, your page, uh, hydrating your page before all your HTML has been streamed. So React uh, understands that, you know, uh, wrapping your uh, components around suspense means non-urgent update. So that will take lower priority, but your shell, that is the initial HTML, will still be hydrated synchronously in one go. And as and when 
your next components are ready and the HTML for them is streamed and your code for them is also uh, downloaded, then they will get hydrated as in how they are uh, received at your client end. So same thing happens with your reviews as in when your server streams it and the uh, it JavaScript is available for it, that will also get hydrated. So now hydrating the page before all the code has loaded. We are only speaking about, uh, you know, selective hydration and your uh, uh, using suspense on the server side, but we still have code splitting and lazy loading that's already working on the client side. So now if we discuss that in order to hydrate the products, your JavaScript has to be available. Only then you can be hy hydrated. So we can again use the same uh, code splitting concept wherein you're actually calling uh, React Lazy to uh, download your JS bundles asynchronously for whatever components you wrap around suspense. So that uh, again helps in hydrating it asynchronously. So now, you, in this particular example, you have wrapped reviews around suspense. OK, so this, this is the third scenario. In the third scenario, we are de uh, understanding how uh, you know, we can interact with the page before all your components have hydrated. Now, this is where your prioritization comes into picture. So what selective hydration does is it allows um, the hydration process to be prioritized based on what your users interact with. Previously, we had seen that any click or pre a key press will cause the component to be hydrated synchronously. So um, here, you only have the reviews component. So uh, your first HTML will actually the all the other components are outside the suspense boundary and hence that will be hydrated in synchronous fashion and if at all user tries to interact with it now unless the hydration is complete the user will be blocked but now if we try to uh, wrap image carousal around suspense and also reviews around suspense let's see what happens so first your shell will obviously be hydrated now because image carousal comes before your reviews component in the uh, render tree, React will start hydrating it first. But if at all user reacts with the uh, clicks on the reviews component, what React now does is it will pause hydrating your image carousal and uh, prioritize hydration of the reviews component. And then once that is complete, your uh, uh, image carousal component can be hydrated uh, in during your idle cycles. So now that we have uh, opted into these features, the problems that we discussed with SSR earlier can be solved because you no longer have to wait for all the data to load on the server before sending any of the HTML. You no longer have to wait for the JavaScript to load to start hydrating. And you no longer have to wait for all the components to hydrate before interacting with the page. And the benefits of streaming SSR is that whatever your benefits were available for SSR are already in place, but they are only en enhanced because of the concurrent features. And also because your streaming is in place, it takes care of network back pressure as well. Now, these features may have certain caveats that will be available for your specific use case. So, you know, in order to handle them properly, do read the docs. That's all for your, uh, what I have for you today. Thank you.